Hi, uh, we have uh, we have a procurement expert in today's supply chain show. It's Natasha. She is from Croatia. I've been following her on LinkedIn for some time. I think she has an immense profile and expert in her field. So without wasting any time, I would like basically Natasha to introduce herself. So since we are in the coronavirus uh, days, we cannot be face to face. So we are doing this uh, conversation on this episode on Zoom. So hopefully you enjoy it. Hi, Natasha. How are you? Hi, fine. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Right. So, would you mind introducing yourself, please? Okay. Thank you. So, hello. I'm Natasha. Uh, I'm now staying in Varaždin in Croatia, uh, where is my hometown when I live in work. Uh, so, coronavirus, as you said, uh, uh, made some different, uh, how to say, uh, terms of uh, working. So, now we are using technology for uh, this conversation. Well, uh, I'm uh, firstly uh, expert and trainer for uh, procurement and uh, inventory management uh, specialized and uh, I have a master of economic science. I'm doing my PhD and I hope I will finish it very soon. Uh, my professor is very uh, uh, tough and he is making a pressure on me, but okay, I will do it. Uh, well, uh, my expertise is to help companies to improve their procurement processes and to find the ways how to achieve additional value in the companies. Uh, I also work uh, uh, with uh, middle and uh, bigger companies here in Croatia and in the region. Uh, sometimes I do a host lecture in uh, fac faculties and university here in Croatia. I uh, write uh, articles for specialized magazines uh, for entrepreneurs and uh, specialized in supply chain. And uh, maybe for me most important thing is that uh, three years ago I made some uh, research on the creation market to, to see how companies uh, think about the education for procurement people. And that uh, this research uh, showed me that there is a lack of that kind of um, uh, programs. So uh, I founded a procurement academy here in Croatia. Now I'm very happy that we are at the eighth generation. And um, I think that more than 100 uh, participants uh, uh, went to this uh, program here in Croatia and, of course, in the region Serbia and Bosnia and Herzegovina. Well, I think today's topic, since you are a procurement expert, Natasha, I want to pick up this uh, whole concept of procurement as a value adding function, right? So, how, how being a procurement expert, how you say, how you define value adding? Because historically, again, I'm talking 20 years ago. But procurement was considered as purchasing, which is, you know, go and buy parts, find suppliers. So explain what's your vision of procurement as a value adding uh, function. Okay. Well, uh, let's start from a different side. Uh, for example, customers, they buy products or their uh, services. But what they want, they want to satisfy some kind of needs or some kind of um, uh, uh, needs they, they, need, they have to uh, achieve or in their production or for themselves. So they are looking for some kind of value. Uh, this is uh, the, 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 the economic definition uh, what, uh, what, buy, uh, what customer buys uh, as a satisfaction. So from, from a procurement point of view, uh, well, we can know that procurement has uh, five uh, typical parameters. Price, quantity, quality, uh, right time and right place. So, uh, if we ask procurement guys, uh, procurement guys, what can you add or what, can, uh, what value can you uh, give uh, to the customer? So you, uh, you could reduce the cost for sure, but you don't have, you cannot compromise the quality. On the other hand, you could, for example, assure some uh, operational efficiency, but you cannot uh, affect any additional cost or you cannot affect any quantity uh, aspects for sure. So, uh, for procurement, it's very difficult uh, to find the ways, but the most important that those five articles, five parameters has to be achieved at the same time and not yeah, to jeopardize it. it. 
No, but that, that leads to my, my second question, right? Because, you know, I work in big corporate, uh, you know, I know quite procurement fun, uh, folks as well, you know, category managers, you know, uh, CPOs and all that. They all so much focused on cost out. They almost yeah. ignore everything else. So cost out and cost reduction is, of course, the top of the agenda. It should be. I'm not saying it should not be, right? It should be, right? But as you said, the value addition is the five pillars of the of the procurement. So cost and price is fine. But where, where what about the other four, three or four pillars you mentioned in terms of you know, driving costs and things like that? So where our CPOs and the procurement leaders are not so much focused. So I, I would like to understand this. Uh, well, uh, from my point of view, uh, when I work with uh, my uh, clients, they always uh, give me some kind of, uh, I don't know, task. We want some savings. We want to cut our costs. Okay, I said, it, this, is, this is nice. You have to do it. But how can you do it? It's not the, uh, the procurement task. It's not uh, to, out, I don't know, uh, to ask an additional discount from your supplier. This is not a procurement. We have uh, totally different strategies. They have to become the priorities for each uh, CPO in a company. For example, when I start uh, doing uh, some consultancy uh, work, I usually start with the process. Process is, from my point of view, the most important uh, uh, strategy. If you don't, you don't have a process, uh, everything else is not important. So you don't... you. Do you agree with me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, uh, your uh, organization has to know who is responsible for what, who is responsible to buy, who is responsible to order, in wh what quantity, in which uh, qu quality, uh, who uh, is re responsible to approve some cost. Uh, they have to be uh, very, very straight um, uh, borders of control and to uh, of the follow and the follow of the process. Uh, this is also very important when uh, companies want to uh, I don't know implement some digitalization. Okay, you can buy the best uh, uh, IT um, uh, 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 tool for your company, but if the process is yeah. not uh, flowing or you don't have yeah. organization uh, where everybody knows what to do. So you will not receive it. Yeah. I say this, I don't know if you've seen my blog or not. I say this four pillars of supply chain strategy, which is like people, process, system, and execution. So you can, as you said, you can buy the best system, but if you don't have people, people rightly trained or the process around it to follow the system yeah. to the maximum benefit, it will not happen. So, so that's, no, no, that's great. So while I've, I've got you on the, on the call, uh, I want to pick your brain on the, What's your suggestion on the top, let's call it top five or top three, whatever you want to answer, cost saving ideas. So what do you see the most common trend that if you go as a consultant, which you are, and I would uh, highly recommend you, uh, my viewers to, to contact Natasha as well, is to go and see in terms of top five cost saving ideas. Well, so first of all, I will, uh, I will repeat once again, you have to have a flow process. You have to have a process that uh, don't have a waste on it. So that means some kind of lean pro process in procurement. It's easy to put it, but the CPOs and the board have to be aware of it and they have to, uh, I don't know, give the permission to do this. So after that, when you have a process where everybody knows what to do, then uh, the most important is to see what categories are the most big expenses in your company. So that means to implement some kind of category management, to, uh, then to do a spend analysis and to realize the what most uh, uh, important uh, costs in your company are. Then you can cut. Then you can concentrate uh, your energy and your effort on those categories. Sometimes people really uh, take your, uh, their time and waste their time on uh, some kind of um, uh, cost that are not so important. They, they will not have an, an achieve additional value for the company. So, as I said, the second one will be, uh, of course, a very uh, successful uh, category management. The third one, of, the third is uh, uh, absolutely a supplier relationship. Improve your uh, relations with, with your supplier. Uh, pay attention about your contract management. Uh, be aware which suppliers are your uh, 
the most important. Uh, try to drive innovations with your suppliers. This is something that would give you your uh, additional value for procurement. So, uh, supplier is not your enemy. Supplier has to be your second part in uh, driving uh, innovations and uh, of course to that uh, additional value. Uh, of course, I will always say efficient inventory management. Uh, it's a close. <laughs> Do you agree? <laughs> yeah. Me. Yeah. Uh, it's very close, uh, connected with uh, procurement. Um, uh, it depends on the organization structure. Sometimes procurement is responsible uh, for inventory. Sometimes is not. But they are very, they have to work very very close. So efficient uh, inventory management, I will say, it's the one also of the top uh, strat uh, uh, strategic uh, for uh, cutting costs. And maybe for, for the last but not the least, of course, and especially now, is the risk control. Uh, we uh, usually forgot about this, but a situation like Corona or I don't know, uh, some kind uh, uh, of crisis uh, remind us that we have to be aware of a situation like this. And uh, we all know that the risk is something that we cannot, I don't know, prevent, uh, 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 predict. But we have to have some strategies and we have to uh, know how to react when some kind of uh, crisis happen in our environment. You never mentioned the indirect, uh, indirect suppliers, right? You know, so what do you suggest about that? Uh, well, I will say, uh, for example, it's, it's connected for sure with uh, category management and of course indirect, uh, in, indirect uh, uh, procurement could be some uh, part of this strategy. But uh, now you remember me uh, to, uh, to say something more. You have to control your memory expense. What is the example? Oh, I don't know, there's something that is not uh, under uh, control, it's something that happens uh, in the company. Let me, let me give you an example, because for example, I worked in a company so where the direct material was uh, managed in the procurement, right? Of course, all the suppliers, all the indirect, you know, the electricity bill, water, that was controlled, that's fine. And, and then the, even the freight, you know, freight is a big category, if you think about it, you know, all the, you know, shipping lines and all the air freight, again, yeah. that's managed, yeah. that's fine. But then there was a huge spend on the marketing. So the marketing budget was like crazy in millions, right? And then they were just outsourcing their all the work like crazy to the marketing agencies. And that dollar money was much higher, right? Yeah. And then we as a supply chain team and procurement team start digging into and then we realize the concept of, let's call it category management does apply to that. And we bring so much saving that I couldn't believe. So is that what you mean? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, well, from my uh, experience, uh, when I come to, to companies uh, to make some consultants or something like that, they always told me, oh no, forget about marketing, there, there are uh, some special department. So, do they spend some your money? Yes, they do. So, <laughs> it has to be under control, really. Uh, uh, I mean, this is not important who will order. But the, uh, the uh, placing of uh, order has to be under control. They has to have some kind of, I don't know, budgets, uh, forecast, whatever. But the, I uh, usually say my clients, uh, for every order you will receive uh, an invoice. And someone has to pay for it. So be aware of that. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, see, as you see, you're the more procurement strategy, procurement expert, I'm more supply chain guy. And this is where well, in operations guy where I, I my expertise are. I do write about procurement. You know, I've got some good blogs, but I would not claim myself to be as, as expert as you are. But then I want to challenge one thing because what I've seen, and again, I'm sharing my practical practical experience that my procurement category expert, because they got so much pressure on cost out and things like that, they go ahead and go and find a let's call it a, a cheaper source with the right quality. So I'm not saying they're finding a poor quality, but let's assume they're finding the right quality. But then going for outsourcing to more or less called the best cost country, you know, you're going to Vietnam, you're China, you're India, you know, okay. you know, all those, all those countries to find, uh, to find the suppliers. And when, when they actually, when they actually do that, and they almost forget about there is a lead time in play as well, right? 
what I mean by lead time in play is that if you're going to find, you know, go and find a, a let's call it used to make in Europe, for example, something, you know, shorter lead time, and then you go and find supply in China, India, Vietnam, you're increasing a lead time to, to four weeks. That means I'm increasing my inventory. Therefore, you're not going to, you know, it cannot be a just in time supply. It cannot be short frequent suppliers. It has to be container loads, right? That means you're buying a higher MOQs for okay. let's call it B and C class items. So you're increasing your inventory, you're increasing your inventory carrying cost. Just hold a minute. I have, I have more to that. Then, then what happens if there's an equality issue, which generally happens, you know, once in blue mm-hmm. moon, then the cost of poor quality and you air fit stuff. So, and so I call it, let's call it cost of non-conformance. So inventory carrying cost and cost of non-conformance. So when I challenge my procurement guy saying, I did a study actually saying, you outsource this to China. Okay. You reduce your piece price by 30%, but the inventory carrying cost and cost of non-conformance actually 20% higher than previous year. So the net savings is, is not much is even 10%. So I, that's why I want to challenge the whole concept of let's call it, just find the cost saving, not at the expense of other critical supply chain elements. Right. So what's your take on this? Well, uh, I must say I totally agree with you uh, because, okay. <laughs> yes, I do, uh, because uh, as I said, uh, maybe in the introduction, the most important is to have a balance of all parameters of procurement. So I know it's much easier for a procurement guy to, to buy a bigger quantity. Maybe an initial price is lower, but we also have to calculate all other costs. Uh, as you said, maybe uh, we will have a non-conformity of the product, delivery time, uh, maybe the, our uh, time spent uh, to, uh, to, uh, to achieve all the, uh, all the order uh, from uh, uh, unknown supplier and everything. But uh, for, uh, how to say, to make a balance between procurement and uh, supply, the most important is the planning. To, to plan and uh, usually we forgot this lead time from our suppliers and uh, then uh, the there is a big pressure on the procurement you have to uh, you have to you have to you have to buy it we don't have a time but we have to be aware if we change a supplier if we have some other suppliers the lead time will for sure move and, and change uh, on the other hand, we also have to uh, be aware of our stock. That means that we have to know what we have on our stock. So yeah. someone has to uh, have a control and to check uh, the ratio, ter- inventory turnover ratio. Someone has to uh, check our uh, slow movers and we have to uh, make an actions for that. Uh, for example, uh, uh, I will say uh, once again, this coronavirus uh, make us a big challenge for all of us, not o- only for procurement, but also for uh, inventory management, uh, because uh, we didn't plan to have this kind of situation. But what can we, no- what can we do now? We have to realize, be aware of that, what we have on the stock, and do the best of it. Maybe make, make some actions, uh, maybe uh, make uh, some changes in our uh, final products or, or sortiment. It depends, but we have to do it. This is the most important. Thank you. First of all, the, you are the first procurement guy who agrees with me. Mostly they don't. But we have to aware, be aware of that because uh, I always say the procurement uh, and uh, inventory management, this is not two different topics, for sure. Uh, and uh, we have to really collo- co- collaborate together and uh, to work together uh, to achieve savings. So, sure. Sure. No, so my, my last question would be for today is, Again, uh, procurement, I do believe generally, no, I do believe the procurement is a strategic function, right? And yeah. the procurement responsibility goes beyond just as the, actually the five things explained. And what I mean by that is procurement should, can play a role in, in uh, evaluating in, in other areas. For example, uh, you know, driving product innovation with some suppliers, you know, for example, finding more, uh, you know, maybe there's an R&D or a new innovation going on with some suppliers, which, which our R&D team don't know and bring those ideas to table and do some co-product development. You know, 
I, actually my PhD is in supply development, and that's why I'm, I I know that this element of that is a is a strategic supply development. You know, there's a case studies about Apple. Apple is Apple because they work very closely with Foscon and things like that. So, what's your take on on this uh, this side of value addition of strategic procurement? Well, uh, I totally agree with you. Uh, the uh, uh, you know cooperation and co uh, innovation with suppliers, of course, uh, supplier development, of course. But I will also mention vertical integration. This is also okay. one of the parts and one of I don't know actions we can do in strategic uh, uh, procurement uh, to control critical aspects of our, uh, for example, supply chain. Uh, we can buy our producer of raw materials. This is one way how we can control it. For example, when we sell products, we can avoid the distributors and uh, sell directly to the manufacturer that we will avoid the middleman uh, and uh, save some money. But this is uh, this also, uh, it's not so easy to do it. So we have to be aware yep. uh, of all advantages and disadvantages of this kind of pro process. For example, this, this could give us um, some kind of diversification in advantage uh, to our competitors if we yeah. buy a producer or if we uh, uh, make an acquisition the producer of our raw material of course we will have an advantage and we Definitely. could also uh, difference differentize our us from the competitors no, I think, uh, Natasha, thanks for having. I think you, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I think it's an immense discussion. Your, your knowledge has been evident, and I think uh, I'm very looking forward to collaborate with you on STEM Dujo on a few other topics, right? So thank you for joining. Thank you. It was my pleasure also. Thank you. So if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave your comments below.